Hello, Loveland Magazine readers. Cassie the Food Guru here. And where am I this time? Right off the bike trail. It's a little slice of paradise. Most things are homemade and we have Jimmy Hooper in the house. He is the owner and makes a lot of the food, which I feel is definitely interesting uh, in comparison to a lot of businesses th these days. You know, it's maybe prepared the day before or maybe prepared the week before, but Jimmy, he does it right on the spot. How are you doing today, Jimmy? I'm doing good. Awesome, awesome. Thanks for having us. Now, guys, this is right off the bike trail. Like I said, it's called Hometown Cafe. Now, hometown, because they have a lot of local goods from local vendors around town. And honestly, a lot of stuff, like I said, is homemade. So I want to get right into it. Right, so I know you're known for coffee, lattes, hot chocolates, right? You use Deeper Roots. Yes. Um, tell us about that company. Tell me why you selected that for your coffee. You know, why you decided to do lattes. I know you're open eight to three. It makes sense, right, for uh -huh. breakfast. So tell me a little bit about your uh, coffee supply. Okay, yeah, uh, we decided to go with Deeper Roots because uh, just like the, the name Hometown, we focus on uh, local products and uh, we try and find as many uh, local sources that we can and after tasting a few different Cincinnati coffee roasters we went with Deeper Roots. We really liked uh, the people and their atmosphere and we really liked their coffee. So uh, we've used them for the past three years and we're loving it. See and I love that using somebody local, <laughs> right? You don't have to go conglomerate. Mm -hmm. You can support local which is what you do. So I want everybody to know this man gives back. You are a part of almost every event in the city. Um, you're a part of so many charities. Um, you invite food trucks, I mean places that I've never even heard of and they literally get their start here. Mm -hmm. So Jimmy, tell me about your mission. Tell me about why it's called Hometown Cafe and tell me about the history because this building, believe it or not guys, has been around for a while. Yeah. So tell me how you got yourself lock and loaded. You know, tell me your background a little bit. Like I said, tell me a little bit about the name Hometown. Okay, yeah. This uh, uh, hometown kind of kind of grew from just an, an idea of growing up in Loveland. We, I graduated from Loveland High School. Uh, we loved uh, um, you know bringing our kids here to different events and just spending time down here in Loveland. I mean, we love the community and the atmosphere and all the events that the city puts on. We just uh, uh, really grew on our hearts. So. Um, when we came up with the hometown concept, we knew we wanted to stay with that and stay local and um, just bring in the local market items from the, you know, you see them at the Loveland Farmers Market. We wanted to carry their products uh, and also be an avenue for other small businesses who are just getting started, who are in the area that need uh, commercial kitchen space or maybe you're just trying out ideas to see if it would work. Uh, and we just wanted to be an avenue for, for them to uh, uh, expand and grow this community. And remind me, Jimmy, when exactly did you officially open Hometown? Because I know previously, mm -hmm. wasn't it kind of in the family? It I remember was. us talking, um, we did go to Loveland U, if you don't know what that is, Loveland <laughs> University, that's when we first met. Um, it is a, a great program where you know people come in, learn about Loveland, it's beautiful. Y'all should check it out if you haven't. But, <laughs> That's when you told me your background, and you, you have a chef background. I do, um, yeah. He also does catering, guys, Loveland Catering. So tell me about your background and how that really mm -hmm. meshed together with your, with your theme and concept here. Okay, yeah. Um, so I got started with the Tavern Restaurant Group here, a local company uh, at uh, Deshays up in Harpers Point. Yes. Uh, I worked at uh, Deshays for a while. I went down to Nicholson's downtown when I was at UC for business. And then um, I decided to go into culinary after my business degree. So I went to uh, New York to go to the Culinary Institute of America. Uh, and then after I kind of wanted to grow in the culinary field. So uh, me and my wife Leah moved to Chicago where uh, I worked for the Fairmont Hotel and was their banquet chef for a while. And then we started having kids. And we wanted to bring them back to Loveland because we loved growing up here, both of us uh, went to Loveland. Um, we, we knew that this was the place that we wanted to raise our family. So uh, we moved back and uh, I continued my culinary career. And when we had our second child, I kind of wanted to scale back a little bit. So I was doing the stay at home dad thing. I stayed home working part time. Uh, and then the opportunity to um, take over 
uh, and buy hometown from my brother-in-law Jacob who, opened, who bought the building, renovated it into Fresh Press. Uh, he ran it for two years as a side business and just decided he didn't want to do it anymore. So uh, me and Leah decided to buy it, take it over. Um, I could continue catering through my Loveland Catering uh, Company and also run Hometown as the coffee shop breakfast. Uh, and things have just been expanding from there. You know, the local market shelves, the kitchen takeovers we do that we uh, allow people to come in, uh, you know, take over the restaurant for the night because we close at three. So from three to, you know, 11, the space is just sitting here. So it's just another opportunity for other local small businesses to come in, uh, open up as their restaurant for the night to try out their ideas and see if it works. Which, oh my gosh, I don't know of many other businesses that do that. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're giving these local vendors who, I'm looking over here, granola, right? Maybe they have nowhere with that type of equipment, it is expensive and you're giving them the opportunity to make their goods, which mm -hmm. is unbelievable. So I wanna commend you for that, Jimmy, I love that. So what I wanna go into now is talk menu, right? Talk about what you have here. Mm -hmm. I mean, if y'all look around, it, it, it is so homey in here. I wanna stay in here and curl up by the fire. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's seriously. So we have made to order breakfast sandwiches, mm -hmm. right? We have uh, real fruit and veggie smoothies. Mm -hmm. Love that, real guys, not with all the sugars and all that stuff in it. Um, you have cold pressed juice, which let's talk about that right now because out of all the things on your menu, the cold pressed juice, the way you do it is unbelievable. So tell me a little bit about the cold pressed juice. Yeah, the cold pressed <laughs> juice was uh, something we uh, acquired with the building from Fresh Press. They really focused on the cold pressed juices. And so with the equipment purchase, we got the the X1 juicer, which is a, a 10 ton press. It uh, grates the vegetables into a bag, 10 ton press squeezes it and all the juice comes out. And uh, we have uh, five really good juices that we've, we've kept on the menu. And uh, we just think it adds a lot to the trail. You know, a lot of, a lot of people running on the trail, very uh, nutrition focused people that like to come in and get their, their, their juices that are loaded with uh, vitamins and all the things good for them. Now that process, what is the health benefits of that process? Mm -hmm. Does it maybe extract more vitamins doing the doing the press at that at that ten times, or yeah. how does that how does the benefits work with that? Yeah, the uh, mm -hmm. difference between like the cold press is a big, big factor because a lot of uh, uh, juicers will heat up in the process of grating it and uh, uh, you know smushing it. It heats it up which degrades some of the nutritional value of it. And so keeping it cold with the cold press and keeping everything um, you know, as cold as you can will uh, preserve those nutritional values of the juices. See, that's what I thought, awesome. See, there you have it guys, health benefits, right? <laughs> so on top of that, you have lunch too. You have soups, salads, wraps. Um, you also have local treats. So we have snacks all the way around guys. We have honey, jam, granola, I mean, I'm looking around, I'm seeing things that I haven't seen in a, in a while. Yeah. So this is unbelievable. Now, <clears throat> one of my favorite parts, local artists. They're able to come in here and display their art. Mm -hmm. Tell me where you came up with that idea because that's unbelievable. For artists, and as you know, I would say food is art as well. Uh -huh. It's hard to get your work out there and have people display it you know, for free basically. Yeah. So kind of tell me about that and you can sell it too here. Yeah. So tell me a little bit how that idea came about. Yeah, sure. That's just like uh, with our, our market shelf items, we do a lot of consignment where uh, the people will come in, they manage their own stock level, their prices that they want to sell at. Uh, and I mean, any restaurant will need things that hang on the wall. So just another aspect is to, uh, we rotate local artists every six weeks. So you get a six weeks window of hanging your own artwork. You can put up price tags, we sell it for you. And uh, it's just another way that people can get their name out there. I love that. And I'm looking at a couple right here, these fuzzy little pictures. That's pretty cool. I, I kind of want those. I'm not gonna Lima. lie. Do we know who did those? Uh, Josie Masset. Okay, okay. Josie Massette. Shout out, shout out to you and your fuzzy. She fuzzy does watercolors and uh, a lot of different things. So. I love that, I love that. Okay, so 
Back to the menu, I selected a couple things that kind of caught my eye. Mm -hmm. um, you know me being vegan. That's why I love hometown, because yeah. you got <laughs> options for me. Right, so the first one that caught my eye, the one with no meat. Yeah. Okay, first of all, that name is awesome. <laughs> I love it. So we have hummus, roasted red pepper, sauteed squash, spinach, egg, and on an everything bagel. Mm -hmm. Pretty popular with the people? Uh, I would say it is, yeah. Uh, even people who, uh, you know, aren't vegetarian like to, uh, it's a little different than your normal everyday breakfast sandwich. Right. You get a some different flavors in there. So uh, we sell it uh, quite often. It's not our most popular, but yes. uh, we do sell it enough to, to keep it on the menu. Amen to that. Now, what would you say is the most popular item? That um, would... I know you have a lot, right? Yeah. I, I don't like to uh, discriminate against your favorites, <laughs> but what would you say that you're like, dang, I'm making this so much, like I gotta get some back stock in here. I would say the thing that uh, I see the most is the beast. The beast, and yeah. what is that? It's a uh, the everything bagel, bacon, egg, um, avocado, uh, spinach, and tomato. Nice, and you came up with all these names yourself? Well, I did, yes. And yes. with friends and friends and family, you know, we, I'm not as creative with the name, so I always need help with that. But so. still, I mean, and it makes sense, the beast, right? You're getting all your nutrients yeah. in. Yeah. I mean, you're getting right off the bike trail and you're getting all yeah. that back into you, which is uh, unbelievable. The I think one, each letter of the beast is an item of the sandwich. So like the bagel and then okay. the egg, avocado, the uh, spinach, uh, tomato, yeah. So. That's some good marketing right there. <laughs> See, man of many talents. Um, the other one that I thought was interesting that's a little different, the cozy bowl. <laughs> kind of like a breakfast scramble, which I love. We have bacon, spinach, egg, roasted sweet potatoes, apples with maple drizzle. <laughs> that combo, I know it's good because I've had that combo before, but I'm telling you people, it sounds weird, but I'm telling you those flavors are great. Yeah, on People love it, yeah. Yeah, I that's, thought so. That's the uh, second most popular, the beast cozy and bowl. the cozy bowl. Are are very good. Now it, it does come in a bowl. In a bowl. Okay. Yes. Okay. Awesome. awesome. People who you know a lot of <clears throat> new uh, uh, people who are in nutrition staying away from the carbs, so the cozy bowl is perfect. There's yes. no bread or anything like that in it, so yes, it works see, out. I love that. Um, you know, you have toast. One's called the toast. Yeah. There you go, guys. Uh, sourdough, avocado, tomato, fresh basil, pickled onions are my favorite. Uh -huh. Oh my gosh, and balsamic drizzle. Pretty popular as well, I'm assuming. That is, yes. It, it's pretty basic, but has everything that you need. Uh -huh. I love that. The avocado toast is, a, you know, it's very popular right now, so this is our little take on it. Mm -hmm. Which is smart because the avocado toast, it, it's on every breakfast menu. <laughs> so you got to stand, but you do stand out because you added a couple of things that I haven't seen before on uh -huh. there. So I love that. Um, now that sourdough, homemade? It is. It's a, it's a local. Uh, Allison Sawyer is someone that uh, we know that makes it at our home. and. We order straight from her. Allison Sawyer, shout out to you too. And then um, I liked this just because it, it's pretty typical, but you know, if you're not a big breakfast person, this would be a good go-to, the oats du jour, mm -hmm. right? It's just steel cut oats, almond milk, and seasonal toppings. Yep. So with the seasonal toppings, fruit, typically granola, or what toppings do you Fruit, yeah, we do like, a, uh, I would say our typical is like an apple cinnamon. We do a cranberry orange. Uh, uh, brown sugar and maple syrup. Um, so, Making me hungry, stand, you know, we just every time we make the oats, we make a, a different flavor. <laughs> oh, that, I want to eat something now. What you got for me? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so smoothies. Let's talk about that. There's a couple that I thought were interesting. So we got the Frogman and the Tropical Magic. Mm -hmm. Not Magic M A G I C, right? It's M A J I K. Mm -hmm. So tell me about the Frogman. Okay. And tell me about the tropical magic. Yeah, the Frogman's our our uh, healthy smoothie with the spinach and kale, avocado, banana, uh, kiwi to give it a little bit of sweetness. It is the uh, one of our less sweet smoothies, but it's it's popular. We sell a lot of the Frogman's. And it attests to the Loveland Frogman. It is. Yes. yes. Shout out to it is to green. Guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then the tropical then the, magic. Um, what is blue magic? Blue magic, yes, Blue Magic is an extract of spirulina, which is an, an algae. They uh, somehow get this powder from the algae and it's what? bright blue, so uh, the smoothie is bright blue. 
That is so cool. And in addition to pineapple, banana, coconut, orange puree, that literally sounds like I'm going to be sitting on the beach here in a second. That's pretty cool. I love that. And great for the summertime, I bet. It is, yeah. Oh, yeah, in the blue. I mean, uh -huh. come on. With it the kids, if the kids want one, a blue smoothie, who wouldn't want that, right? Exactly. <laughs> now, um, lunch, right? You always have it in the cooler. Just kind of depends on, you know, the day on what you have. Do you typically always have the soup salads, the wraps, and the kid boxes? Uh, yes, we do. We typically focus on the quick grab items. You know, a lot of people off the trail just want to grab something for lunch. So uh, we make a wrap and a salad of the day and we just have the cooler stocked with, uh, you know, depending on the business level with a variety of things. Because doesn't breakfast typically stop at 11 during the weekdays? During the weekdays, it stops at 11 and then on the weekends, breakfast is all day. See, that, and that's so smart, so mm -hmm. smart. Because as you know, I mean, during the week, during that time period, it can be dead. Mm -hmm. little dead and breakfast really does stop at that time but during the weekend i mean there's people getting breakfast at like one because they were over at bishop's quarter for yeah. too long you people, know what i'm saying <laughs> we like people to wake up late and then come in yes for the afternoon. exactly yeah. exactly um so we talked about the cold pressed juice but i had a few that were interesting and the health benefits were interesting so the first one <clears throat> i want to talk about is the charcoal lemonade mm -hmm. because that actually has activated charcoal in it it does yes. so tell me the health benefits on that and kind of tell me what all is in this charcoal lemonade okay yeah the charcoal lemonade is uh, uh, fresh lemon juice honey uh, local honey and uh, the water and then the activated charcoal which uh, your body doesn't naturally absorb charcoal so it's uh, really good at absorbing toxins so as it's passing through your system it's supposed to be absorbing all the bad things in your system and you just goes right through you who would have thought charcoal does that you know what i mean mm -hmm. crazy um next one the kale force honestly i like the name of it <laughs> it sounds intense um it promotes good gut health so looks like there's chlorophyll in there uh -huh. tell me a little bit about that and obviously what else is in it but tell me uh -huh. about the health benefit behind that okay yeah the uh, uh we've got the kale spinach apple celery um, lemon juice um, maybe some cucumber yes. and uh, uh, all the green vegetables and the chlorophyll like you're saying good for your gut yes um, it has very good um, uh, I don't know what you call them the bacteria that that oh, helps yeah. your gut health and uh, just promotes good and, good I, health. and I love that too because I tell you what that sounds to me Minus the apple, it kind of sounds like a healthy Bloody Mary. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. So let's put some chlorophyll in the Bloody could, Marys. You could put some hot sauce in there, and it would probably be exactly, perfect exactly, and, and it's healthy, right? Um, the last one, a ginger shot. Mm -hmm. Ginger shot is a, a ginger juice and lemon juice, real, uh, real small three ounce uh, bottle. You just drink it real quick in the morning. It's supposed to. Uh, boost your metabolism so get you started for the day uh, if you have any uh, nausea it's supposed to get rid of that and ginger is really good for inflammation <clears throat> hangover shot <clears throat> yeah. Just kidding. that and the charcoal lemonade there, you're there good you to go. go you're set see they have everything here guys <laughs> um okay so i do want to touch on they do have a bakery and snacks so muffins croissants danishes bagels i saw hard-boiled eggs pitas mm -hmm. hummus yeah um anything that i'm missing that you want to point out that you carry with those bakeries and snacks now? Um, you know, we just uh, have this, we try and rotate, you know, we don't want anyone to get bored for with the products that we have. Absolutely. So our quick grab cooler, we just stock with, uh, you know, whatever we're making for that day, the hard boiled eggs, the hummus and pita, the veggies. It's sometimes we use some of the local uh, spice mixes and make the mix for the veggies uh, in our in our cups. and. We just rotate our products just to keep it fresh. It, which I love, but I also love that you often switch up your local market, right? So the selection of items from local businesses. So kind of tell me what's been popular right now that you have. Um, I'll try to put you on the spot. You don't have yeah. to name all the uh -huh. local you know, businesses, but what have you seen that's just... I mean, selling off the shelves right now. Yeah, the uh, uh, granoles are always popular. Uh, Jaybird Farms, their hunt, local honey and the jams are popular. Oh, yeah. Really, a lot of people will buy the um, 
things that you'll eat right now. The Laura's Healthy Delights, the granola bars and the energy balls that she makes are really good. We sell a lot of those. Uh, Lisa's Pretzels and Anna's Snacks, those are both very popular as well. Oh, and, those, and I do love those energy balls. Those <laughs> are so good. And they do give you energy. Um, okay, so not all of the menu, but if you want to try some things, the things that we just went over, you're, you're safe to try those because they are good and they are popular. <laughs> um, what I want to go over now, just to kind of let the people know, because we're always having events here, mm -hmm. uh, the people that live here in Loveland, whether it's, you know, a nonprofit, um, you know, celebrating, you know, Hearts of Fire, which is coming up soon, yep. you're super involved in. Uh, the first event that I saw is you're going to have the kids craft party. Mm -hmm. So I saw that. So let's touch on, you know, what you're going to be doing for Loveland's first Hearts of Fire weekend. Um, obviously, I know, and y'all should know if you've been reading our articles, <laughs> but I want Jimmy to talk about kind of what are you most excited about? I know you have a few things going on all weekend. So kind of tell me about that. Yeah, we any of the, the special events that they have down here, we get excited for because we uh, like to set up a booth on the patio so that we can see everyone who are coming down. Uh, we do uh, uh, our sweet potato chips. We usually top with something. I think we're going to be doing pulled pork and the sweet potato chips with the toppings. So that is very popular. And then we've got uh, we've got an ice sculpture coming here. So we've got you'll have to come down and see the coffee cup all lit up here on our patio. Uh, and then a bunch of the kids crafts classes at night who is another local person that does art classes that we paired up with so uh, yeah we're excited and you're super involved this year I mean you have a lot of stuff going yes. on and, and I love it and, and they're always involved you know with all these types of things so it's kind of historical the first, yeah, the Hearts first of Fire. one yeah, yeah it's gonna be crazy I'm so excited love is in the air <laughs> so yeah. um, what I want to go over next is everything you offer on top of food so I'm going to kind of name things off and then we're going to touch on them. So okay. you do what they do events. Um, he'll talk about that. They do evening rental rates, post hours, which we kind of talked about. Mm -hmm. um, also does evening catering as well, which is really interesting. Lovely catering guy, right? Mm -hmm. um, upstairs is available for meetings, mm -hmm. rentals there. Um, they also do a kitchen rental, which we kind of talked about for local businesses trying to, you know, fine tune their craft. Um, what I really was interested in is membership details here. Yeah. I did not know that that was an option. So uh -huh. I know a lot of people in this community that are trying to start their own businesses because guys, this is the time for self-employment. Mm -hmm. I mean, it really is starting your own business, um, especially in this area. So tell me about what a membership here means and how you can kind of go about getting involved in that. Yeah, sure. Uh, one of the aspects of the that's part of our kitchen rental program as far as a membership so uh, anyone who decides that you know they want to give it a try and they need a commercial kitchen space they can become uh, a member here which uh, just means that you're going to use the kitchen six hours a month and it's a three month membership uh, so basically you're just saying you're going to use the kitchen six hours a month uh, and pay the hourly rate um, which is discounted from the one-time use rate. Uh, so if you were to, uh, if you were planning on starting a small business, needed commercial kitchen space, you could come here and become a member, which is $20 an hour to use the kitchen space. Uh, you would have access to our, our Google Calendar where all the kitchen renters will put the times that they want in the kitchen. And uh, it's very, very, um, local and friendly and everyone works together to uh to fit all the times that they need in there and very affordable very affordable because i know a lot of rental spaces where you rent the kitchen it's way more than that yeah. like triple so talk about the evening rental and your catering that people can have an event here and have you cater it if they so choose kind of talk about that yeah so since we close at three then the space is empty we wanted to open it up to uh, uh, renting it out. People who have, uh, you know, the space is big enough for birthday parties. We have, uh, you know, little baby showers, things like that here in the, in the restaurant. You can be inside, you have the whole patio, which will seat a lot more than, you know, 40 people. Uh, so you rent it out. You can uh, bring your own food in, own cater if you would like, or you could have us do the catering. I have Loveland Catering is kind of like 
where Hometown got started because I was doing catering before I bought Hometown and took it over. And so we kind of continued the Loveland catering into Hometown. Uh, so I offer catering to the events here or, you know, events outside of here. Uh, and with, with your catering, just so the people know, what do you specialize in? Do you kind of, you're a jack of all trades, like mm -hmm. you just kind of make what they request, or are there certain things that are kind of like your main skill set? Yeah, I, I do tend to customize menus for each individual event. I don't have, uh, you know, working, you know, by myself. I usually stick to parties under 50 and really just working closely with the customer to find out what they're looking for. Uh, you know, I can do lots of different things being a, a banquet chef from a hotel. Uh, and so really just customize it to what they want and uh, we make it happen. And you know what's so crazy is my boyfriend's uh, sister had her pre-wedding dinner here. Yeah. <laughs> she had that here and I wasn't able to be here. I can't remember why, but apparently it was unreal. So yeah. <laughs> thank you for that. Um, lastly, guys, one more thing I want to touch on here is, once again, giving back to the community. That's what Jimmy does. My State Threads Apparel. Now, what you can do, guys, is go on there, right? You get a unique URL and $10 from every t-shirt goes directly into your business. Mm -hmm. So tell me a little bit about that because I didn't know that. And honestly, I mean, I'm kind of interested. So yeah. tell me a little bit how you got started with that and have you seen success from it? Yeah, we've got connected with them. They were really, um, when COVID was shutting a lot of restaurants down for uh, a while, they were reaching out to different restaurants. You know, they designed a whole uh, apparel line for us with our logo, logo and different different things on shirts uh, and basically they're like you know we'll host all the apparel people can buy it online and you'll get a percentage of the of the sales so that kind of really helped us get through the pandemic of being closed because we had that extra income uh, and even though we've opened back up we still have the link on our website you can still go there order any hometown apparel that you would like you know, baby onesies or hats or, or whatnot, sweatshirts, uh, and just know that we get some of the proceeds here. Yeah, and like I said, any business can do this. I mean, any business can create that URL and, you know, get some money during this, you know, it's kind of still a tough time. So yeah. anybody that's interested, you know, check it out, My State Threads, right? So this has been awesome. I am so excited to tell everybody about what you have told me here today. Share it with the community. Um, obviously, this is the little slice of paradise right off the Loveland Bike Trail. Um, it's tucked right by Narrow Path. You can kind of see Paxton's right across the street from Loveland City Hall. You won't miss it. I mean, it looks like a home, so <laughs> it, it's gorgeous. So last thing I want to touch on, Jimmy, because I ask everybody this. Why do you love Loveland? Mm. It doesn't have to be a one-page narrative. I yes. just want to hear what your thoughts are on that. Uh -huh. Growing up uh, here in Loveland, just uh, there's a lot of history of, uh, I grew up right on the river, so just playing on the river, coming down here and going on the bike trail. Uh, we just, me and my wife both thought just the, the school district was, was great and just the people here were great. The city's doing so many cool events uh, and the, the this, community seems to be really growing so uh, just to be able to be a part of that and have a space down here and just you know feel the energy that people have down here is just uh, just great amen to that so guys if you're looking for a place to come have some breakfast take grandma take your mom take your dad whoever come on down open eight to three mm -hmm. uh is it monday through sunday or monday through okay monday, monday through, through sunday, sunday. Mm -hmm. awesome remember on the weekends they stop serving breakfast at 11 but we got it all day long <laughs> or on the weekdays but on the weekends it's all day long which mm -hmm. is fantastic so come on down here support jimmy and all the things that he does endless list here um thank you guys so much jimmy thanks for having us i really appreciate it in loveland cassie the food guru here we'll catch you later